Hey everybody, Will Brink here. Uh, gonna cover another important topic. A uh, really big topic, of course, uh, hydroxychloroquine is in all the news and is a big debate and a big fight right now, uh, to put it mildly. Uh, this video will attach or be a sort of part two of my last video, which goes into uh, oxidative stress and inflammation and where I feel that a very large percent of the medical community treating serious complications to COVID are missing uh, a really essential area or, or opportunity for treatment and saving lives. And uh, so you'll have to, if you didn't watch the last video, uh, it'll be linked at the end of this one. You'll definitely want to read that or watch that, sorry. You want to view that to get up to speed as to what I'm talking about in some here, because this is going to go fast. We're going to get kind of deep into the weeds on a lot of this. I'm not going to be able to stop and explain what a lot of this means. I'll do the best I can. Two, uh, regardless, there a paper I wrote, a lengthy article I wrote with all the resources and discussion of all this will be linked below the video. So again, if I go through a lot of topics or don't cover in depth what you know, you'd want to know more about, you'll need to read that article. Uh, this is really sort of a, a cliff note. Um, the other video plus this one is sort of a cliff note to the article and a compendium uh, uh, companion, I guess would be the proper word, to that article. So keep that in mind. Uh, warning to uh, title of the of this video, a little bit clickbait. Uh, I'm going to admit this early. Uh, it's a little bit of this clickbait, not totally. We are going to talk about hydroxychloroquine and some important points about it, but no, it's not an entire video about hydroxychloroquine. However, it'll all make sense. So I, I just, but I do want to at least uh, let you know up front that I'm, I'm trying to be honest about this. So, all right, so hydroxychloroquine, which I'm just going to call HC, uh, HQC, sorry. HQC, so I don't have to say hydroxychloroquine over and over again, obviously has been is in the news a lot. It's getting a lot of press. It's getting a lot of attention. There's a lot of conflicting data. I'm not going to go over it. However, doctors in various hospitals are employing it, have employed it. To be honest with you, as all of this, this fighting is going on and all that, behind the scenes, uh, a lot of medical professionals for quite a while have just been quietly using it because, you know, they're doing anything they can to find what may work. So you can sort of rest assured that it, it beside or behind all of the argument you see in the news and online and all that, I can tell you a lot of doctors um, are well aware of hydroxychloroquine and are having their own uh, a clinical uh, experience with it, good or bad. But anyway, don't, I will tell you that they're just going about their business and doing their damn job, okay? So let that be known. So what brought me to HQC, hydroxychloroquine, was a really amazing paper that I just read that brought, again, back to what I said about oxidative stress and inflammation and where a lot of medical professionals could be doing a better job of treating. Again, you'll have to get into the other video. So a patient, um, this, is, these are, this was a paper that I just read were, were, were of um, case studies, uh, 10 case studies. So a patient that they had uh, was on hydroxychloroquine. They put him on hydroxychloroquine. They had intubated. They were on uh, a respirator. This, this person was in deep trouble and were going downhill fast. They tested the person for what is called glucose 6-phosphate dehydrogenase, a mouthful. So we're just going to call it G6PD. G6PD is an enzyme that is essential for a lot of things. I'm not going to go down the list of what G6PD does. You'll have to look that one up but it is involved in a, a, a whole lot of uh, energy production um, through, um, through a, a long pathway, sorry. So I don't want to go into G6PD, but I will for specifically how it applies here. So G6PD is, in some people, it's not as uncommon as people may think, but G6PD deficiency is a genetic deficiency. Uh, it's most exclusive to men. Uh, it's more common in black men and other um, uh, darker skin people from different regions, but it's not as uncommon as people may think. I think they estimated something about 600 million people have uh, G6PD deficiency. So the person that is G6PD deficient is unable to recycle glutathione. Now again, I mentioned glutathione before. I'm not going to go into what glutathione does. It is, but needless to say, it is absolutely essential for immune system. It is apparently quite essential for combating all viruses, but this one may be in particular. There was even a, a hypothesis paper I read that basically came to the conclusion that all of the major complications of COVID are due to uh, glutathione deficiency or, or uh, glutathione, whatever deficiency per se, but well, glutathione exhaustion, I guess would be the right word, where you have 
Uh, glutathione is, in be is between two different states, which is reduced or oxidized. And the more reduced, the better. And what happens is the body usually is able to recirculate or recycle uh, reduced, oxidized back to reduced, which has enough nutrients and so forth. But in the case of G6PD deficiency, the person is unable to recirculate uh, glutathione. And this is a known thing about G6PD deficiency. It's even known, however, that people with G6PD deficiency, given hydroxychloroquine, have problems. The data is a little mixed. Not all data says that, but let's just go with it. So they realized the patient, back to that patient, was in serious trouble and was going to die. They tested them for G6PD deficiency and began giving them N-acetylcysteine. Now, I put N-acetylcysteine down here for now. Now, N-acetylcysteine is essential for the body to produce back to glutathione. So, what happens is, and I'm going to go down the, down the list here, we'll come back to it. Alright, so, this person had G6PD deficiency. They initiated, what happens is with the person that does, is deficient and can't make glutathione, so I put minus glutathione meaning loss of it, is you then get a massive amount of oxidative stress because the person does not have sufficient glutathione to reduce the oxidative stress. You then end up with something called hemolysis. Hemolysis is, the, is a general term for the breakdown of red blood cells. Now this should be triggering some things off in your mind because you've heard things about uh, clotting issues. Um, if you watched my last video, I talked about heme iron and free iron being perhaps the major cause of oxidative stress. It is a major cause, if not the major cause of oxidative stress, which goes on to create runaway inflammation. So I know you are, even those who are not real science deep person, I'm sure this is sort of having, giving you some aha moments here. So what happened was, so they realized this person had G6PD deficiency. They initiated IV NAC and to, to address the oxidative stress and address the hemolysis. You, you'll probably also, you might have heard of things like hemolytic anemia. Basically what happens is a breakdown of red blood cells causing anemia. But hemolysis is a general term for a, a loss of red blood cells. So now you have, you lack oxygen ca uh, carrying capacity, which again, that should probably be an aha moment for a lot of you because uh, COVID is particularly associated with low oxygen uh, carrying states and uh, intubating people who show low oxygen who may not have needed to. That's another topic, but something called happy hypoxia. Anyway, and with that hemolysis, you end up with runaway inflammation, or at least partly due to hemolysis, but you end up with runaway inflammation, and then the person is in deep shit. So, when they added an infusion of NAC to this person, they had a com almost a complete turnaround. Uh, the hemolysis went away, all their indicators of, of inflammation um, went away, or improved greatly, should I say. Uh, their, uh, a whole bunch of their indicators, their lab indicators, showed that this person was on the up and up, and they were actually able to turn him around and save this person by the simple addition of NAC. Now, if you watch my other video, you read the article, that's one thing that I recommend within a, a, a compendium of other uh, antioxidants that would have profound effects on these people. So, let's go back to hydroxychloroquine. They had nine other patients who were also all intubated. They were in. They were all failing. They were probably going to die. Uh, their their lab uh, lab indicators of, of runaway inflammation were there. Their um, uh, organs were shutting down and so forth. These were these people were in trouble. They gave nine more people uh, N-acetylcysteine uh, IVs and turned nine out of ten around dramatically. Now the interesting part. Now this is where I said the video was a little bit of a, a, a clickbait because the other nine people did not have G6PD deficiency. Apparently just one of the ten. However, on the off chance, they said, well, even if the, the other nine patients are not G6P deficient, well, let's try the IV uh, NAC anyway. And it worked on uh, basically nine out of ten of them. I think there was improvements even on the tenth one, but not as dramatic as the other nine. So that's 90 percent, you know, turnaround rate, which is pretty damn impressive. And that's just one nutrient uh, that I recommend um, to add to the uh, anybody who, in my view, and I'm not a medical doctor, I'm, I'm more of just a research scientist wise guy, uh, but I have a pretty good instinct for these things. I, I, have to, I have to give myself credit for that. I'm not good at a lot of things, but I am good at that. Um, 
Anyone that comes into, has to check into a hospital or is shown positive for COVID, maybe even if they're not, because as far as I'm concerned, any, uh, sorry, NAC and what else I'd recommend is dirt cheap and very safe, should be plugged into an IV bag of NAC, vitamin C, zinc, um, possibly low dose hydroxychloroquine, depending on where the doctor falls uh, on that one and some other doodads that I recommend. Uh, to address basically the oxidative stress, which I did go to in my last video was to, this is the driver, in my view, oxidative stress is the driver uh, of basically all the downstream problems that happen with COVID-19. And it's not addressed uh, by, really addressed properly on the mainstream. It's not standard of care to address this. And I explained that in the other video as to why. Where they go after, what they're going after normally is they go after this. They're going at the next stage which is inflammation, they're doing a pretty good job of it too. Again, I'm not trying to flow, throw doctors under the bus. I think they're doing, uh, for the most part, a really good job and the best they can under the circumstances, but they do have a, a bit of a blind spot in this area, and that has to do, as explained in the other video, as to why I think that is. Uh, okay, so hopefully, so my point being is that certainly if people are on hydroxychloroquine, uh, it's a no, it, it, well, and of course they should probably be tested for G6PD deficiency anyway, but if they are, well, they're, then they're going to need the NAC for sure. Apparently, that's a, that's a given. However, regardless of whether a G6PD deficient or not, um, the other nine patients obviously demonstrated with or without it, NAC is going to help a whole lot. Now, uh, one thing I didn't say about hydroxychloroquine is it is, it is apparently a pro-oxidant. That's not, you don't want a pro-oxidant. But Apparently, especially in people with G6PD, it's very pro-oxidative because they are unable to make sufficient GSH. But even in people um, that can make sufficient GSH, and again, when you're talking about COVID, you're already behind the, the, the curve, body trying to keep up with GSH and recycling its other uh, antioxidants uh, and so forth. So you're already behind the curve anyway. But whether, you have, whether you're using HCQ or not with G6PD deficient patients, um, I bet you any, adding NAC is going to make the HC, HQC uh, more effective. So there's the, there's the title of the video, hopefully connected. Uh, I agree, it's a little bit of clickbait, but still. Um, now, again, me personally, uh, if somebody goes into the hospital and has, uh, is diagnosed with COVID, uh, you know, I don't really care if they have G6PD deficiency, nor do I care if they're on HQC or not. I think they should be immediately, like I say, plugged into a bag of NAC and C and zinc, uh, and maybe a low-dose hydroxychloroquine and some other doodads, depending on what the, the doctor finds, depending on what the comorbidities are and so forth. Uh, okay, hopefully hopefully I have explained this as best I can in a short video. There's a, obviously a lot going on here under the hood, uh, especially ex ex getting into G6PD and what it does in the uh, energy pathways and all the different... Uh, but G6PD is needed basically for the body to recycle um, uh, oxidized uh, glutathione back to reduce glutathione. That, that's, the, that's the short of it, but it does a lot more than that. So questions, uh, confusions, read the article attached below the video, uh, watch the previous video, and you can put it together. If you're a medical professional, um, you know, please feel free to contact me. There's also a lot of resources and papers in my article. If you're not a medical professional and you know anybody that's, you know, um, in need of this information, you know, then contact me. And uh, Sorry about my less than sophisticated uh, backdrop here. Hopefully you could see all that, but um, I haven't. Ha I used to have actually a fairly fancy backdrop and a green screen and all that when I moved. Uh, that all got trashed, so I'm kind of back to uh, do try to do videos, and I'm doing them, you know, quick and on the cheap with a whiteboard. But science is not pretty sometimes. It's just effective. All right. See you on the brings home.